What's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crafters. I'm David Wilson, and today we're going to talk about how we can make Emacs have a dynamic tiling window manager layout using the Edwina package. So if you've ever used a tiling window manager like DWM or Xmonad before, you've probably been uh, or grown accustomed to the idea of dynamic tiling f uh, layouts. So basically what this means is anytime you open up a new window, uh, the window manager will automatically decide where in your tiling layout to place that window based on some predefined rules. So um, in this Edwina package, uh, what we have is um, a master stack layout, which you may be used to from these window managers like DWM, Xmonad, maybe even Austin WM. Uh, basically, the idea being that there is one primary window and then any other windows you open are in secondary windows on the side of the screen or at the bottom of the screen. And the purpose of this type of layout is to make it so that you have uh, one primary focus area with some other windows that are available for context. And you can also rotate these so that you can ch change which one is the primary at any given point. So if you're like working on a document or a code file, then you might have other windows to the side like a terminal or some other output or maybe your org notes or something like that. And um, having this kind of tiling layout uh, work automatically makes it very easy for you because you don't have to think about where windows go. You just open new, open new windows for whatever you're doing and then um, they go in the in the right place. So let's take a look at the, the homepage for this really quickly. Uh, it's on github.com slash AJGRF slash Edwina. And um, basically it says it's a dynamic tiling, tiling window manager for, for Emacs. Um, and it's uh, directly inspired by DWM. Uh, one thing to to note is that they do say that this is an experimental package. Um, I don't know how long it's been in development, but um, may, it looks like maybe about 16 months. But uh, if you do run into issues while using this or you have suggestions for the author of the package, definitely feel free to file an issue at this repo and uh, hopefully someone will be able to help you there. So um, I'd also like to thank the uh, my viewer XVNA for suggesting this package. Um, they left a comment on one of my previous videos about window management and said that if I wanted to try out a dynamic tiling window manager for Emacs, then uh, Edwina would be the one to try. So thanks a lot, XVNA, for the suggestion. All right, so let's go ahead and set up Edwina. Uh, I have a small little bit of configuration here to, to set that up. So I'm just going to go ahead and run it. And um, now that it's installed, um, one thing that you might see here is there is a set queue for this display buffer base action. This is something that is recommended from the readme of this package uh, because by default, Emacs will continue to just open uh, new windows wherever it decides to. So if you want it to change that behavior, you have to customize this variable that comes with Emacs called display buffer base action. Uh, so maybe now that I've got Edwina loaded up, opening these the, the help for these variables will actually show it in the right place. So let me just show you that. So I'm going to open the help for display buffer base action. And you'll see that it opened up this window on the right side where normally it would open the window at the bottom. So now we've already seen that Edwina has taken this window and placed it on the right in the in the correct place. So uh, display buffer uh, base action is uh, a default action used by display buffer if no other actions are specified or all fail. So basically, whenever Emacs decides it needs to display a buffer in a window, it's going to call this display buffer function. And then however display buffer base action is configured is how Emacs is going to try to open that um, that, that that window for the buffer. And we've configured it to use display buffer below selected, uh, which means uh, anytime you want to open a new one, just open it below the, the current uh, window that's selected. And then uh, the original value is nil. So basically it would either like pop open a window in whatever the default behavior is, or maybe in the current window where it is. So let's see if I can open the documentation for display buffer and see what that does. So when I press enter on that link, it actually popped open another window below this window, and it's continuing to keep that same layout that Edwina has specified with the master stack, where we have the primary window and the secondary windows on the right-hand side. Um, and this says that uh, display buffer just chooses where to place the, the buffer. That's not really important. The more important thing is to show that we did open another window in the same layout. So let's run through some key bindings since we don't really know uh, what all we can do with this until we start to to play with the bindings. So um, 
there is uh, the, the ability to uh, cycle between windows. So uh, I should say by default, the um, the prefix for all of the Edwina key bindings is set by default. It's Control C, Control W. You can also customize the Edwina key map prefix variable uh, to uh, to set that to something else if you want. So it's set to Control C, Control W here, but whatever you want it to be can be set. Um, but uh, we're going to use the default for now. So I'm going to use Control C, Control W, N, Control C, Control W. Uh, if you're using which key, you can also see the uh, the prefix uh, list there. So I'm going to press N, and it's going to pop me to the the next window here. And I'll do Control C, Control W again, and it moves down one more. Control C, Control W, N, Control C, Control W, N, and then it basically just cycles you through all the windows that are currently visible. Uh, same thing for P, which is a go to the previous window. So if I use Control C, Control W, P, it will pop me down to the uh, the bottom most window on the right hand side. Uh, you can also swap places with the next window. So uh, if I wanted to swap the primary with the uh, the, the next uh, buffer here or the next window here, I could use Control C, Control W, capital N, and that switches this help buffer with the primary buffer that I was working on before. And as you can see, the focus stayed within the the original buffer that I had been using. Uh, personally, I'm not sure whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm not sure what the workflow is for that because I would expect to see that the buffers would get switched, but my cursor would go back to the primary because I, I probably am wanting to switch between two buffers to, to work on them. But uh, maybe there's a, another way to do that. So you can also switch back. You can use Control C, Control W, capital P to switch that back. And also you can switch with the the previous or the the last window in the stack if you use Control C, Control W, capital P from that position. So um, it as always, it loops in a in a counterclockwise direction within and a counter a clockwise direction within and a counterclockwise direction with P basically. All right, so I'm gonna put that back where it was. Oh, let's do that again. Okay. So now you can also uh, increase or decrease the size of the master area. Uh, if you use control C, control W and square bracket to uh, open, sorry, right square bracket to make it larger or control C, control W left square bracket to make it uh, smaller. And we're speaking of the primary area here. Uh, the secondary area is also being resized, obviously, as a part of that. And uh, I believe if you want to set it back to the default size, you can use control C, control W, R. Does that work? Let's see. Control C, Control W, R. Yes. Okay. So it was the default size already. So basically, it just resets the layout back to where it was. So if you happen to do some things that uh, mess up the layout, like if you use some window splitting commands that you um, you ran yourself in the primary era, if you use Control C, Control W, R, it will actually rearrange all those windows and then put the additional splits that you had into the uh, the secondary area. So you can see there's multiple of these over here now. So uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, also, uh, if you want to have a little bit more control over this and have multiple windows in the primary area, you can use the uh, the increase and decrease number of windows in master. So uh, I'm going to use control C, control W, I. And what that's going to do is take the topmost item of the stack and put it into the primary area and split that in two. So if you do have two buffers that you would prefer to have be uh, in the primary area, like maybe a code editor and a terminal, you can do that. And then if you want to push that um, that bottom window back into the stack, you can use Control C, Control W, D to decrease the number of windows that are in the primary area, and that will um, move it back to one. And you can increase it to an arbitrary amount. So if I hit this twice, uh, then you have three windows in the primary area now, and you can use Control C, Control W, D to decrease that back to one again. Um, as usual, you can delete windows. I mean, you can use a normal Emacs key bindings for this as well, but um, I think that, uh, yeah, if I use Control C, Control W, K, it will delete one of the windows that are in the layout. Um, so I think it, whenever you delete using the normal key bindings, I believe it uh, responds correctly. So if I'm in the primary buffer and I use uh, Control X, uh, no, not, not Control X, K, let's see, Control X, uh, zero, I think is for close that window. Then it will rotate the buffers as you would expect uh, and make the topmost uh, window in the stack be the primary now. So uh, it will respond correctly to that. Also, you can clone the current window. So if you want to, um, if, if you don't have anything open yet. So here's one of the things that was a little bit uh, confusing to me about this package when I first used it. Um, if you don't have any splits yet, and you let's say you want to open up a new file, uh, you can do that. You can open up any file. 
uh, but it doesn't create a new window for that. Uh, the only way that you can get it to create a new window sort of by default is to clone the current window. So if you use control C, control W, C, then it will clone the current window and then it will add a new one to the stack. And, and you can just do that again, however, however many times you want. So now I have three windows on the, on the stack and then I can switch those buffers to whatever I want. Uh, it might be useful to use something like um, find file other window. So if you use, um, let's see, let's run the command find file other window. If you use that, then you can open up another file and then that will pop open in the right hand side. Uh, same thing again, if I do that one more time, find file other window, I'll open up another file and then that will pop over to the, the stack as well. So uh, the other window functions that we talked about in the creating and managing uh, multiple windows video that I just did last week, um, those really do apply here. Um, and it may be something that becomes more of your primary workflow if you do want to use this kind of layout. So I do know that it's possible to change to a wide layout instead of a tall layout. Uh, you can see actually here in the uh, mode line, there is a uh, tall written here in the mode line. So that means we're in the, in the tall layout. Let me see if I can check the variables for Edwina. Yeah, okay, Edwina layout. So um, what it says here is that uh, a layout is a function that takes a list of panes and arranges them into a window configuration. So really what this means is this could be very configurable if you wanted to make your own layout function. Uh, I don't know how that works and there doesn't seem to be documentation yet, but if you were to look at the code of uh, Edwina tall layout, then um, you might be able to tell. So let's see, Edwina layout with master and stack areas for panes. I'm gonna go to the code in edwina.el uh, tall layout and um, seems pretty simple I don't know it's just like a little bit of code there so um, I'm not sure if they have a wide layout built in let me check because they they do mention it in the documentation so um, master the side frame is too narrow we'll put it on top instead okay so I think that it's 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 choosing to do wide or tall based on the amount of space available. So that's something to keep in mind is that if you have um, a very narrow screen, like you don't have a wide screen like this, if you have more of a like a four by three screen, it might choose the bottom for the stack instead of the side. All right, so um, last thing to mention is that if you are uh, familiar with DWM, the window manager, and you're used to the key bindings there, there is a function that might be helpful to you called Edwina setup DWM keys. Um, and if you look at the documentation for that, uh, it says it sets up DWM like key bindings. The modifier, which is a parameter, is the mod key to use, and it must either be super or hyper. With no argument, it uses meta. So um, basically what this does is uh, you can uh, tell it to use whatever, uh, or let's not say whatever, if you can use super hyper or meta as the prefix key for the DWM keys. Um, often in tiling window managers, you'll see people use the super key, which is like the windows key on many keyboards um, to do window management key bindings. So that might be something you would use. Um, what, it, what it does is it looks at this Edwina DWM key A-list. And if you were look at, looked at that, uh, it tells you that the um, the pre the prefix key will be bound with whatever these first letters are and then bind to these functions. So if you use the DWM, some of these uh, bindings might be familiar to you. Um, so you don't need to do this by default because Edwina does have its own bindings. But if you want that compatibility with DWM, this might be helpful to you. Uh, it might be helpful also if you're using uh, EXWM and you want it to function more like DWM or Xmonad, uh, you can bind these. However, um, if you want it to work inside of X, uh, X window system windows, program windows, then you might need to use the um, EXWM input set key instead of what it's using here, which I think is just plain old define key. Yeah, it's just using define key. So uh, the, the code for this package may need to be updated to have that as an option if people want to use that for EXWM. All right, I think that's probably enough to cover in this package. So if you know of any other interesting uh, window management packages for Emacs that do this kind of dynamic layout. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to cover them in a future video. Uh, also, uh, I would like to thank the sponsors, GitHub sponsors, for uh, for sponsoring the work that I do on these videos. If you're interested in sponsoring the content that I make here, please go to github.com slash sponsors slash Davey Will. There's more information there. And uh, until next time, uh, thanks a lot for watching. Happy hacking. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.